Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over our mailbox right here that we have on the top of the Glock slide. It is also known as the Aimpoint Acro. So this one came out last year. It took me a while to actually get my hands on one because these things were selling like hotcakes when they first came out. Um, reason being Aimpoint has a stellar reputation for making really quality uh, red dot optics and uh, the Acro. Does it live up to that? Well, we're about to find out here uh, during today's video, but the demand was really, really high out of the gate. And I was finally able to get one from our friends over at Optics Planet, which big shout out to them for getting us one out. And I've had it in for a few months now. And the reason it took me a while to actually put the video up wasn't because I didn't have enough time around or anything like that. It was because of reports that I kept hearing about uh, poor battery life. So we'll get into that as well a little bit later on. Now, one thing I wanna address right off the front is that a lot of folks say it's just too big, it's too large, those sorts of things. And I get why you think that looking at it, it does look like it's much larger than other optics out there on the market. Probably the two biggest competitors right now are gonna be the uh, Type 2 RMR, which we have here. And you guys can see that we'll roll in a photo there with it. Um, and then additionally, the uh, Holosun, this is a 507, but also the 80, uh, 508 that's out there. Um, very good optics that I have videos on one of and videos on the other is coming. Um, but it's really not that much larger. The reason it looks so much larger is because it has the enclosed emitter, which is huge. Uh, that is not something to be easily overlooked in my opinion. So let's get into all the details of it, do some drop testing, those sorts of things, and uh, discuss its features and what I think of it overall. On the left side of the optic there, we do have our on and off buttons, basically a plus and minus. It does have night vision settings. So for those of you guys who like to shoot through your nods with pistols, and I know there's a lot of you out there who like that, uh, it does give you that capability. Uh, additionally, it has 10 brightness settings and the quoted battery life anyway from Aimpoint is that on setting six, it will give you a year and a half of runtime. That said, right now, let me just do it. Let me put it on there. So, so right now it's on setting six and I can barely see it. It's not a super bright day out here today. It's kind of overcast, hazy. I don't know if the camera's auto adjusting or not. And I can tell you right now, unless I'm intentionally looking for it, I can't see it. I, it needs to be in these, these settings I would probably feel comfortable carrying this on setting eight. Um, and then even out there, we've had it out on the range in really, really bright settings. And setting 10 was not like washing out or anything like that. So in terms of the intensity for most lighting conditions, or if you're using a weapon light, particularly like anything that's gonna be, like the modern ones that are gonna be 500 lumens and up, um, you're gonna need that thing on seven or eight minimum, in my opinion. So with that we tested the battery life of it so on setting and setting seven rather excuse me i left it and shot it and left it i didn't adjust it and i got right at two months out of it then on setting eight i got nine days out of it now i didn't say that wrong you didn't misinterpret what i just said that was with a new battery uh, we got nine days out of it so speaking of the battery it does not use a cr2032 battery um, it has our battery compartment over here on the left side and it uses a battery that has reduced uh, capacity and capability versus a cr202 302 rather 2032 battery which most of us are familiar with and which a lot of other competitive offerings run off of so in terms of battery life, uh, if you're using this as a duty gun, a carry gun, whatever the case may be, just know that if you're doing that, you're going to have to change the battery more than the competitors out there. Throughout the video, we've had this mounted up here on a Glock 34 MOS. And just so you know, if you're gonna use the MOS system, you do need a uh, adapter plate for it. They're available, they're out there. And honestly, for most of the popular pistols out there, uh, you can find the adapter plates out there. Uh, again, when I first got this in, uh, that wasn't always the case. There was some are hard to get, but nowadays there's plenty of them out there and you shouldn't have any issues uh, getting into that. Other uh, things you're gonna see on the outside here is that we do have our windage and elevation adjustments. Now, again, like I said, this one, we've had it for a few months now and the windage and elevation adjustments on this one are not crisp. So on uh, some optics, you're gonna have like little clicks every time you uh, change it. Uh, not the case at all with this one. However, from what I was reading over at Recoil, uh, they did some SHOT Show coverage this year from uh, 2020. Apparently that's a change, a rolling change that was made. And now the new ones that are coming up now, current production have that, and they had that more tactile feature to it, but this one did not. As a 3.5 MOA dot, so for a pistol, pistol use, I think that's perfectly fine. I tend to personally like something between like 
two to six ish on pistols um, and i know some folks out there even like smaller some folks out there like bigger 3.25 i think is probably what a lot of folks are going to be comfortable with in terms of you know quickly acquiring it but not uh, washing out too much or occluding rather uh, too much of their sight downrange. so uh, what i mentioned earlier in terms of the closed emitter uh, being important let's dive into that one here uh, real quick. So there's no way on the emitter, let's look at some competitive options here. So on our RMR here, the emitter is right back here on the rear and basically it's shooting an LED image out here onto the lens. So if I were to get anything in between there, whether it be dirt or any other material right now, I, you can't see the dot, it's not there. Whereas if I remove my finger, it's there and projected clearly. Now, does that happen a ton in real world situations? No. <laughs> Can it happen though? I'd say, yeah, if it's a duty gun or a carry gun, and even in a concealed carry context, you know, if you get hand, hand type of confrontation and your gun goes in the dirt and that emitter gets closed up, well, then you can't see it until you actually wipe it out. And I know like uh, the Trijicon, uh, for instance, their HRS has been picked up by a lot of military units. So in military context, yeah, it definitely could happen. Now, if there's water on there, some folks have complained about that in the past. I don't really think it's an issue. I've shot RMRs in the rain. They work, it's it's fine. You just have a little bit of water on your screen and, and that's it. So uh, the same is going to be true though with our Holosun, same thing. We have an emitter here in the rear. So it's something that you have to be concerned with for sure. Uh, whereas on the aim point, not gonna happen. I mean, if dirt gets on it, you just wipe the lens and you come off. Additionally, up front, like I said, it has a sacrificial window on there. So that window on front is to seal it. This, this optic is uh, submergible down to 25 meters. Uh, that is an advantage for some folks out there, uh, for sure. And that false window there is there for additional sealing and additional protection. Uh, you can see the angled one there behind it. Now let's talk about the glass quality on this. It's, it's fantastic. Um, there's like almost no, if not no, tint at all to it, no hue, nothing like that. Whereas on both of these optics, there is. Now, uh, for those who are new here on the channel, one thing that that tint does essentially is when that dot is being projected onto the glass that, it, that you see it on, uh, the more tint they have, everything else being equal, uh, the longer the battery life, because it doesn't have to work as hard for that dot to show up on that piece of glass, because there is some something there, right? So there's that tint there that it can reflect off of. Whereas with this one, when it's as clear as clear can be, uh, you just, it, the emitter has to work harder, right? So for those of you guys who watch my Trujicon MRO green dot video, same thing. Uh, that green dot has like no tint at all, but the battery life is much less than the original MRO, and that is one of the reasons why. The same thing is true here. And when you combine that with a reduced capacity battery, that's why we get the battery life issues that we talked about earlier. As we already mentioned earlier in the video, Aimpoint has an excellent reputation for building durable optics. I stand by that. Um, the majority of the guns that I use for self-defense, the rifles for our house, have Aimpoints on them. So uh, we're gonna see here how it's done uh, out at the range. And here earlier, we've done plenty of one-handed manipulations with it. We've had zero POI shift, no issues at all. It runs just fine. Um, so you can run it off of wood. I ran it off of a steel pole as well no issues, a little bit of scuffing there on the front window, and it was fine. Additionally, I should point that out, is that with this particular gun, we had some brass going back into that window. Additionally, uh, no nicks, no marks, or nothing like that. So it's been fine in terms of that. We'll drop it here. Um, first from waist height, because that's probably more likely for a pistol in terms of drop, and then uh, we'll drop it from shoulder height as well. Got a shootsteel.com plate here, and uh, we will see how it does. That was a direct hit and that was definitely shoulder height because I have ADD and forgot what I was doing. Um, so we have a scuff mark on there. Now we'll try it from waist height and actually see. Again, a direct hit onto it and we have some scuffing on the edge, but it's perfectly fine. I don't even think the outer shell pressed into the inner window yet. Let's do it up a little bit higher and see what happens. That was a gnarly hit. And it was on the back portion. Again, it's just fine. We'll do one more drop just for, I guess, the internet. For our homies. 
and that one hit right on the edge on the side scuffed it up but we're just fine so durability everything i've seen on the internet is good everything i've seen in person mirrors that now earlier on in the video i mentioned that i left this at setting seven for a while to test the battery life and the reason for that and i didn't mention it and i should have is that as your battery gets low like let's say you have it on setting nine and that's how you're carrying it uh, as your battery gets low it will automatically drop itself down to seven to preserve battery life and then at that point, it just won't let you turn it up. So it'll go to seven and you're like, man, that's not bright enough for today. And you go to hit it and nothing will happen. So it does have sort of a battery saving function feature to it. Um, but still, uh, the battery itself is not going to last that long in the way most folks are going to configure it. So uh, what do we think of the optic? Well, uh, before jumping into that, price is always a consideration, right? So this one here, and it's going to change over time as this video is being watched over the years. But right now, it's right around the $600 mark. So it is not cheap, not in any way, right? And your ma main competitive offerings, probably as of this video anyway, are going to be your Holo 7 507 and 508. They have a new Gen 2 version as of when I'm filming this. Uh, Trigicon RMR Type 2, I believe Holo Sun is releasing this year. To my knowledge, it's not out yet. It, an enclosed emitter as well. Um, but in the Loophole, Loophole, excuse me, Delta Point Pro, which as I talked about in that video that I did, if you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. That one has battery issues as well in terms of battery longevity. Um, so it's expensive, it's rugged, it's durable, it's water submergible, it's got excellent glass, it has a nice crisp dot on it. Um, there's lots of mounts available for it, but battery life, right? So does it matter if your optic is super durable and super rugged when you pull it out and the dot's not there? No, it doesn't right? It doesn't matter if it's not on when you need it. So uh, for that reason alone, at this point, I would not recommend this for a carry or duty optic, uh, unless your duty was like, let's say like a, like a ranger regiment, right? Those dudes are always going out on direct action type missions. Um, and they generally speaking know when they're on those missions or when they're on QRF or something like that. Uh, yeah, it'd probably be fine for that. Uh, but for general law enforcement, military type use, nope. Uh, I just can't recommend to do that battery life. I mean, there's the criminals don't give you two seconds to adjust your battery life when you draw your gun uh, when you need it. So at this point, I would definitely uh, still, for me anyway, keep the Trigicon Type 2 RMR as the big dog uh, for that. Yes, it absolutely has uh, some drawbacks with the emitter for some folks out there. Um, you know, if you are a scuba team or something like that in the military yeah the acro definitely makes more sense um but if you are say a competitive shooter and you want a, an optic that you know you can depend on and run it through all kinds of really rough stages or you're competing in something like the tactical games where you're low crawling and your optics getting in dirt and those sorts of things yeah the acro absolutely would be a great option because you know let's say the tactical games for instance i think it's a three-day competition or two-day depending on the site uh you know your battery's going to last just fine for that so for that type of use where you need something hard use, uh, but the battery life's not super critical, I would say the Acro's fine. Um, but as of right now, uh, due to the battery constraints, I just, I can't recommend it as a general purpose duty optic or a general purpose concealed carry optic. Um, it's good. It's got lots of good things going for it, but that battery life, in my opinion, is a deal killer. Uh, for for that type of use again for other uses i think it's just fine um but yeah that's pretty much it guys i want to again thank the folks over at optics planet for sending it out which allows us to bring you uh guys these videos without industry support we wouldn't be able to do that because this video is going to make all of about three cents uh on youtube from ad revenue um so thanks to them again um, hopefully the Acro gets sorted out and the industry and the technology evolves uh, to get us that better, better battery life and similar qualities that this thing has. Because like I said, I think it's got a lot of potential. It's just, my opinion, not there yet, at least not for most folks. If you guys have any questions about the Acro or anything else that we talk about here on the channel, you can always post those down below in the comment section. However, if you actually need an answer to your question, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page. I do see all the messages I get over there and I do get back to everybody over there. Sometimes it takes me a few days. Be patient because there's literally one of me and hundreds of thousands of you. But I do get back to everybody. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.